In this video, we're going to talk about what's possible with no code tools. What can you do in the no code space? Now, if you're first stepping into this space, it can be pretty confusing. And so I want to talk through some of this with you to help you understand what's realistically possible for you. Now, make sure you stick around until the end, because we're also going to be talking about what is not possible, which is equally important to understand. Now, first, if you're new around here, my name is Kristen, and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help business owners and industry experts build custom apps to either start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding and no technical background required. So the big question is, what's even possible in the no code space to begin with. Now, really, there's a lot you can do with no code tools, and there are a lot of no code tools out there. And I'm not just talking about no code app development platforms like Bubble, for example. Yes, there are no code development platforms like that, but then there are just tons of third party services that let you add on features and functionality and, and have a really big, robust app all without using any code. So there's a lot you can do. Now, it's important to understand what your goals are. Now, most people who we see and, and most of our own entrepreneurs who we work with, their goals are pretty specific. They're looking to build businesses that support themselves, that support their families, and that support the kind of lifestyle that they want. So they're not necessarily trying to become the next Google or the next Twitter or Facebook or, or whatever. They're really just looking to build a business for themselves, a sustainable and reliable business for themselves, their families, their lives, that sort of thing. Now, when you're that type of entrepreneur, you, you really don't have too many limitations with what you can do in the no code space. Now, there are three specific types of, not, not specific apps, but ways in which we see a lot of entrepreneurs using no code tools. And you might fall into one of these that we're going to go through. Now, we can get into all the nitty gritty, the nitty gritty nuances of the specific types of features and functionality and, and we're not going to do that in this video because that's really specific to each UK use case. Right now, I just want to go over what's just generally possible so that you can even know whether you're moving forward in the right direction. Okay, so the three most common scenarios that we see entrepreneurs in when they're in the no code space is, you know, number one, they are maybe they're working in an industry, they, they have had a career in a certain industry for a number of years, they have a lot of knowledge, but they don't necessarily want to work for a company anymore, or they don't want to uh, work in the business setting anymore. Maybe you know they have a lot of knowledge because they've worked in a certain industry for years or maybe even decades, but they want they want to create their own lifestyle. They want to own something of their own, right? They want their own business. And so we see a lot of entrepreneurs who, who come into this space with a lot of expertise in a certain area, and they want to essentially just extract that from their brains, package it up into an application that they themselves can build without a technical background. And then they want to sell that and essentially transition away from their careers and into this new app-based business that they have created. Now, we see a lot of B2B tools being created in this way. And again, when it comes down to that really uh, nitty gritty feature set or functionality, then you know, we could just go down the rabbit hole with that. Generally, you can create what you need to create generally. Um, but that should give you an idea of what a lot of people are doing, right? They're trying to transition away from their careers by building these types of business tools, these solutions for their industry, because they have so much knowledge. Why not package that up 
and create a business of your own that now you can control and you can, you know, manage and, and grow um, on your own. Okay, so that's what we see a lot of people doing. Now, we also see another set of entrepreneurs who are actually already running businesses. Now, these are generally people who are running service-based businesses, or maybe they're consultants or they operate an agency. And the, the common theme is that they sort of trade their time for money. So they work maybe on an hourly basis or on a per project basis. And so at the end of the day, their capacity for growth is sort of capped, right? Because you only have so many hours in a day you can give. You can always, you know, hire more and more and more people to help continue growing that business. But a lot of people don't want to do that. And so in order to really grow beyond where they currently are at with their services business or their agency or their consultancy or what have you, is they create an app. And this can happen in a couple of different ways. Now, one, they create an app that is kind of like a downsell to their actual core service that they offer. So maybe they work one-to-one -one with companies or it doesn't have to be companies, but maybe their services are more one-to-one -one and they're higher cost. And not everybody wants to you know, pay that much or invest in those services. And so maybe these, these businesses want to create an app that automates some of what they do and that they can actually offer at a lower price for people who don't want the full service set, for example. So they kind of end up offering this tiered pricing within their business, one of those tiers being their services, their existing services, and one of those tiers being an app. And this really just helps them grow and scale their business even further because they, they have to build the app up front, but then from there, it can sort of scale on its own or they can bring in a higher capacity of customers. Now, on the flip side, some people actually build an app that complements their existing service or their existing business, and it helps elevate that service and it helps them uh, charge at a higher price point. So for example, maybe they offer a service that is kind of that uh, time to money type of thing where they kind of max out on capacity. And instead of just offering that one service to each individual client, maybe they also offer an app that goes along with the service. So maybe they do the service, right? They provide the service up front, and then maybe the, the app is on the back end and it helps that customer maintain the service, for example. This can go in a lot of different ways, but essentially it takes what would other, otherwise be a one-time project and a uh, one, you know, one-time income, and it extends that for a longer period of time, which increases revenue. And so we see a lot of people adding apps onto their existing business businesses in different ways that just helps them scale and grow even further. And then. On that same kind of note, but a little bit differently, is the, the third category. And that is business owners or, or small businesses who want to just automate processes or clean up messy processes within their existing businesses, right? So they're not creating an app that's customer facing, they're creating an internal app. So maybe they wanna replace software they currently use Maybe they want to automate manual processes, or maybe they have an existing app, or they have an existing system that's been custom built for them, but it's become too expensive because they have to pay developers to maintain it. You know, maybe this is a coded solution and it, it's, it costs a lot. And so we see a lot of people who will, you know, in those first kind of categories, they're either automating manual processes or something like that. But then we see others who have the apps already and they're just sick of paying for the maintenance of those. And so they want to rebuild them with no code tools so that they can manage them long term and update and iterate them as they want and to kind of grow alongside their business rather than having to bring in an outside development team or developer every single time. So 
it, we see a lot of entrepreneurs stepping into the no code space for those reasons. And when you're looking at no code tools, they are so good for each one of those situations. Uh, you know, they, they help people achieve growth and scale with their existing businesses or just with their lifestyles. They allow them, the no code tools allow these people more flexibility with their lifestyles. They allow them to, to transition out of a career and into an app based business that they can grow and scale on their own terms. They can work from wherever, they can create their own schedules. And, you know, of course, it takes work to get there, right? It, it's going to take work. They have to put in the work to achieve that kind of success but no code tools make this possible for them. And so if, if any one of those things are what you are looking to do, then you can feel confident that the no code space is going to be able to support you with that. Uh, there is a lot you can do with no code tools, because again, like I said, you have your no code platforms at the core but then you also have tons and tons of third party services that you can kind of stack on top of those. And so the, the options you have are um, really, really vast. There's a lot you can do. Now, it's important to understand what you can't do because there are some limitations. OK, so number one, the no code space itself is you can look at this as cutting edge technology, right? The no code space is growing really quickly. It's evolving and it's relatively new. It is cutting edge. Now, some people are looking to build cutting edge technology themselves. They're looking to create brand new technology that is something that you, know, you haven't really seen before. Now, when you take cutting edge technology, right, these no code tools, it's hard to stack cutting edge technology on top of those. So if that's what you're looking to do, then you, you will probably struggle to achieve that with no code tools. And again, it, it, we could get into all these nitty gritty little use cases and scenarios, but it would be really hard to cover everything. And so just in general, if you just think of it like that, whereas, no code itself, no code tools themselves are pretty cutting edge. It's hard to create cutting edge technology with them. They aren't quite advanced enough or developed enough for that, right? It's not really built for that necessarily. Now that could change. And, you know, like I said, the no code space is constantly evolving, but that's generally not what people are looking to do. Um, at least the entrepreneurs who we work with, they're not really looking to do that sort of thing. Uh, on top of that, you know, if you are looking to build the next Twitter, right, or the next Google, if you want to be Twitter, or Google, or Facebook, or, or something like that, then you're going to, actually, th this can go in a couple of different ways. The, the technical answer is you wouldn't be able to do that. But there are a couple of caveats. Number one, you know, some people will ask, can I build Twitter on, you know, bubble? Well, you have to sort of look at the scale factor too. Can you build Twitter at its current capacity where you have, you know, 330 million users and it's been growing and scaling for years and years and years through tons of different iterations? Well, no, you can't do that. You wouldn't be able to do that today with no code tools. But you wouldn't be able to do that today regardless, right? Because that takes place. The growth of, of a platform like that takes place over years of time. And so you sort of have to look at this from that perspective, if, if that's your question or that's your intent. Um, could you start with no code tools? Absolutely. At a certain point, maybe no code tools will uh, support that and they'll evolve to support that type of scale. And then you're fine. Or maybe if you reach that type of scale, or if you're pushing towards that type of scale, you eventually have to switch over to a coded solution. And in that situation, it's probably not that big of a deal. 
right? If you are reaching that type of scale anyway. So no code tools could come into play for you, uh, but they might not support the long-term vision. So in terms of what isn't possible, it's, again, we, we wouldn't be able to go into every single little use case, just like it would be hard to go into every single use case of what is possible. But hopefully that gives you some perspective as to what most people are doing in the no code space or what what a lot of entrepreneurs are doing in the no code space people who are looking to build businesses for themselves or support their existing businesses things like that and then what some people are looking to do just in general and and whether or not no code tools really support that or support that now um, you know sometimes it's just at different phases of their project or of their business so Hopefully that helps give you an overview. If you're just stepping into the no code app development space, know that you have a ton of possibilities just waiting for you. And we have a bunch of other videos that talk about no code apps and different tools. And so if you have other questions, you should definitely check them out. But if you are moving forward, with your no code app. And if you specifically want to use the bubble platform, which is what we love using as well, then we have a free training. It's a, a workshop that'll take you through a bunch of strategy for your app specifically. And also we'll talk about some of the no code tools that we use. Uh, it'll take you through all of that in depth and you can sign up for that for free by heading to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. So sign up for that if you want some help moving forward. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.